Okay guys, so this video is going to take you through eugenesis and ovulation because this is another area where you all seemed a little bit confused. So once again, I'm going to use the models that you had to look at and some of the microscope slides. Okay, so beginning with parts of the ovary, um, you have of course the outer portion, which is the cortex, the inner portion is the medulla, and you also have the ovarian ligament. So within the ovary is the process of egg production. This is called oogenesis. You'll sometimes refer to it as the follicular phase um, because here you have the development of the follicles and the oocytes. So let's look at parts of an oocyte to begin with. I do want to point out real quickly that an oocyte and an ovum are not necessarily the same thing. An oocyte is an immature egg, an ovum is a mature egg. So you're going to see me switch between them, um, talking more about ovums as we get further through. But here we're talking about the parts of an oocyte. So you have the nucleus where the DNA is located. An oocyte, of course, is haploid. So that means it hasn't been fertilized yet, and it only has that one set of DNA from the mother. You have the ooplasm, which is just the cytoplasm of the oocyte. You have the inner glycoprotein layer, which is the zona pellucida that's protecting the egg, right? And it also prevents polyspermy. And so if you watch my video on embryonic development, I kind of quickly go into fertilization and talk about the functional role of the zona pellucida. And of course, also the corona radiata. So the corona radiata is the outermost glycoprotein layer. It's within what's called the cumulusiforus. And so sperm have to break through the corona radiata and interact with the zona pellucida in order for fertilization to take place. So within the ovary, you have multiple stages of development that you will see, right? You have the most immature stage of follicular development. This is the primordial follicle. This is when the, the egg or the oocyte is surrounded by a single layer of granulosa cells, which you can see I have it pointed out to in the microscope uh, slide here. And we'll get to what the granulosa cells do in a second. But I want to point out that the, it is these eggs, these primordial eggs with the primordial follicle that are suspended in prophase one of meiotic division until puberty. I also want to point out here so that you guys don't get confused. The follicle is not the same thing as the oocyte or the egg. The egg is generally encapsulated in the follicle, so it's surrounded by the follicle. So once again, those primordial follicles are suspended in prophase one of meiosis. And then once a female hits puberty, they begin to um, further undergo the first meiotic division or first meiotic phase. And so when it's undergoing the first meiotic phase, it's called a primary oocyte, and it's encapsulated by the primary follicle, okay? You can see I have it pointed out in the microscope slide here, as well as on the model. Now, it becomes a secondary oocyte once the first phase of meiotic division has completed. And so you have, of course, the secondary oocyte as being surrounded by the secondary follicle. Now the graphene follicle, this is the most important follicle. The graphene follicle is the mature follicle, and it's still holding a secondary oocyte. Okay? This is the, when the secondary oocyte has finished undergoing the second phase of meiotic division. Once that occurs, the egg actually ruptures from the graphene follicle during ovulation. And so we'll get into exactly what happens because it's pretty insane. So real quick, in order to understand how ovulation works, you need to know the parts of a follicle. You have these theca cells, which I have pointed to here. It's the outer layer of cells of a follicle. And these theca cells are secreting testosterone. You have the granulosa cells, which is the um, innermost layer of the follicle. 
that are converting that testosterone into estrogen. That estrogen is then pumped into this fluids filled space called an antrum. And the estrogen gets so concentrated in that antrum. So what happens is when that estrogen just gets so concentrated within the antrum, it causes the oocyte to erupt from the graphene follicle and out of the ovary. And then you have these hairs or fimbrae on the fallopian tube that pull it up into the fallopian tube. Okay. But what happens to the follicle, right? The follicle doesn't leave the ovary. It gets left behind in the ovary and becomes what is called the corpus luteum. So here I have the ovulated ovum. So once again, the corpus luteum, and I have it pointed to on the model here, the corpus luteum is that follicle that's been left behind after ovulation. Okay. And it is so important because it produces estrogen and progesterone. The estrogen primes the uterine wall for implantation, but the progesterone tells the body, do not ovulate again. Okay. Now, if fertilization takes place, the corpus luteum persists. So that means that it continues producing progesterone and it continues producing estrogen. Now, if fertilization does not take place, the corpus luteum degenerates into what's called the corpus albicans. I have it pointed out in the model and in the um, microscope slide. So what happens when it degenerates into the albicans? So the albicans does not continue to produce estrogen and progesterone, right? So that means your uterine lining is shed in menstruation and you undergo the process of follicular development again unto ovulation. So that is it for oogenesis and ovulation.